Hello world, this is Craig. People often ask me what I use for programming EEPROMs, and while I have a dozen or so different EEPROM programmers, most of them are vintage pieces of equipment, and these are the only three that I have that are kind of current issue that you can go out and buy now. I actually have three and a half. I have another one that I haven't quite uh, gotten around to assembling yet. This is the Martin Eberhard 1702A programmers. So three and a half that are modern programmers. So the first one, this is the XG Eku or whatever they call it. I've never have figured out how they want that name pronounced. But at any rate, this is the TL866-2. It's a nice capable program. The software is a bit glitchy and it has a lot of capabilities. Nice thing about this is it hangs on a USB port. They have a nice little application that runs with it. It is very universal. It programs EEPROMs, of course. It also does PALs and GALs. It can even go through and test logic chips to see if you got bad gates inside. So this is a very universal, well, I recommend buying one of these things just to have around because they are very useful to have. And they're only 50 bucks and you pay 50 bucks for them and they come with a whole bunch of adapters for all sorts of chips on that. The problem with these is that it can only program up to 18 volts. So if you have a chip that you're programming that requires more than an 18 volt programming pulse, you can't use this one. So if you are programming 2732As, and a lot of those are 21 volts, you know, don't rush out and buy this one without confirming first that uh, you have a chip or a set of chips that you can program with less than 18 volts. So that's why I don't use this on, I would say the most regular basis and the two reasons are, one, it does have a little bit glitchy software. It has trouble with some Intel hex files. And the second is it just simply can't do the higher voltages that I do, that I need on my 2732s. So that leaves us these two. And I'll, I'll have a link to all three of these down below in the description. This one is the Martin Eberhard's 2700 Orphan Programmer. And this one is the Willem PCB 6.0E. Now, in deciding which of these two, if you're only going to get one programmer, it's a fairly simple decision. The Martin Eberhard's Orphan Programmer is only capable of programming the 2708s, 2716s, and the 2732s. So if you have a really old computer that uses those, and that's all you're going to be dealing with, then this is the programmer for you. If you're programming the 2708s, then this has to be the programmer for you. I've, I haven't seen any other programmer that you can get, you know, currently that will go, that will program the 2708s. The nice things about this programmer are it just hangs on a serial port. So you use a terminal emulator or a terminal, and basically you just run it from that terminal. You do all of the configuration. You notice there's no dip switches on this. You set the voltages, you pick what chip you're going to do, and then you can move things around in the EEPROM, read, write, do whatever you want to do. And it's all done on the software. The nicest thing about this hands down is it's extremely well documented. When you, when you get this kit, what you get in the kit is the bare board, the PIC processor, and I don't remember if you get the power supply with this or not, but uh, that's basically what you get for your 50 bucks is the bare board and your processor. You then have to go out and buy all the other components. And I really didn't keep track of how much this thing costs to assemble, but you know, you could be out another 50 bucks and all of the parts to assemble this. And so this is not the cheapest of the programmers, but it is I, hands down the most well-documented. You get, of course, the assembly instructions, you get the theory behind the operation, the schematics, you're able to download new firmware to this. Uh, you're anything, I mean, as if you had gone out and designed and built this thing yourself, you get all of the information that you would ever want on this. It can program anything from 12 volts to 26 volts, and it's a very capable programmer for the 2708s, the 2716s, and the 2732s. If you are only doing 2732s and above, or 2716s and above, then this is a nice programmer. I use this one probably the most on a day-to-day -day basis because simply the, pro the chips that I program the most are the 2716s and the 2732s and the 2764s. So I use this one nearly every day. The downside of this is that it runs off a parallel port. You have to have a parallel port and the native onboard parallel port works best. I haven't actually tried this with a USB to parallel adapter, so I can't tell you whether or not it works with the adapter but native ports always tend to work better on these kinds of things. 
It does come with a simple Windows application. You tell it what chip you want to program, and then it tells you how to set the dip switches. It tells you how to set the jumpers for that program. I haven't ever had a problem with this thing opening the Intel hex uh, format, no matter how complicated it is. It always opens it properly and allows me to program. It does have a nice little, you know, just basic features. It lets you check, make sure that the EEPROM is empty. It lets you manipulate the data a little bit. It shows you the data in a buffer and uh, it lets you program. And it's, it's very quick. You can program pulses. I think this goes from 12 volts up to 25 volts. It does have a USB connector on it, but don't be fooled into thinking that really does anything because all it does is provide power and that's only if you're programming low voltage chips. By the time you get up to the 21 volt 2732A, you can't use the USB adapter. You have to use a little power supply to provide enough power for this thing on the higher voltages. The nice thing about this board is it comes fully assembled and you can get these you know, brand new on eBay for 40 bucks or 45 bucks or whatever. The biggest downside of this is there is essentially no documentation other than the software that tells you where to set the jumpers. And even then, it's a little bit confusing when you're trying to get your voltage jumpers set. But there's basically just no documentation on this. You know, it's hard to tell what some of these jumpers are for. And the thing is, I think there's a lot of capabilities on this board that we're not even using because they're not documented. But that said, it programs a very wide range of chips, all the way down from the 2716, as I mentioned, up to the 27040 4 megabit chips. It does EEPROMs, it does double EEPROMs, it does some SPI stuff, a lot of capabilities. It's just a figuring out how to, to use it is the problem on this one. All right, so this wasn't intended to be a review, it wasn't intended to be a recommendation. Basically, these serve three different purposes. This XG Echo is by far the most versatile one, modern USB interface, nice to have around. Martin Eberhard, if you're programming 2708s, this is your only choice, but also does the 2716s, 2732s, and you really got to take your hat off to the documentation that went into this and the thought process. This is just a, it's just a really nicely designed board. You know, high praise for this one in terms of the documentation and the design. And then the Willem PCB 6.0, very nice, very capable. It's big downside is it does have to hang on a parallel port. And a lot of times you're just in the dark with no documentation figuring out how to use it. I will in another short video go over how to get your code from your assembler into this software and then into the EEPROM and how you have to locate the code and uh, just some other things that are possibly a little bit confusing when you're doing this and people have been asking how exactly do they get the the code into the right spot in the EEPROM. All right, well that's it for the programmers and sometimes I want to sit down and play with a piece of vintage equipment and sometimes I just want to program and when I just want to sit down and program a chip, these are the go-to guys and of those, this is the one that I use on a daily basis simply because those are the chips that I'm using the most often. Occasionally, I do need a 2708, and then for everything else, this is the one that I go to. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it somewhat useful. All right, bye-bye.